In this video, I'm going to go over the Synth section in Wave Create 2.0. Now, for our instrument Wave Create, we have two wavetables, a sub oscillator, and a noise oscillator. The parameters in Wavetable 1 are exactly the same that you'll find in Wavetable 2, so I'll just, for the purposes of this video, I'll just go over the parameters here in Wavetable 1. You have a bypass for the wavetable right here. You've got octave control, coarse tune, fine tune, level, pan. If you click this here, you'll find over a thousand different wavetables that we've supplied you with. Now, if you have wave light, you'll just see this folder. It'll be the 20 different wavetables that we've supplied you with right there. If you want to know more about some of these, the morphing oscillators, single cycle waveforms, or virtual synths, you can check out our videos on those where we go more in depth on those and why they're unique. Here you'll find the display of the wavetable. Now you can view it in 3D or 2D. If I click this, you'll see the 2D. And you click again, it goes back to 3D. If you click and hold and then drag, you can change the perspective of the 3D waveform. Moving forward, we have the speed control here. This dictates how quickly the wavetable plays back. So at a lower speed, I can play it. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a cursor slowly across the waveform. If I increase that, you can see the cursor moving much quicker. Moving to the right, there's a key follow. Now what this does is this multiplies the speed that you have chosen depending on where you trigger on the keyboard. So if I'm triggering higher on the keyboard and I have this as a positive value up here, the playback is going to be... The playback of the sound will be a lot quicker um, than if I go lower. You should be able to see the cursor moving a lot slower. Now if I want the the opposite of that, then I'll just go to a negative value. Then I can play a higher value and it'll move much slower. We have the position. The position just dictates where the cursor will start uh, in the wavetable. Is it going to start all the way at the very beginning, towards the end, somewhere in the middle, or in, anywhere in between? You can choose that by setting a value here. So for right now, I'll put it at 25%. So it'll start about a quarter of the way in. So that's what that does. Uh, the random position, uh, what this does is adds a random value to the beginning. What you can do here is, let's say I want it to start playing somewhere between 25% to, let's say, 75%, maybe three quarters of the way through. I can set this to about 50, and it'll randomly choose each time I re-trigger a note. It'll randomly choose a position between that area. You should be able to notice each time I triggered the note, it started in a different place. So that's what the random position can do for you. Direction, this is kind of a direction and a speed control as well. So this allows you to control the speed in smaller increments as well as the direction. So if I have it at a positive value here, I'm giving it a little bit more speed, but I'm also telling it to move from this display from left to right or going forwards. If I make that a negative value, it'll go the opposite direction. Now, random direction is very similar to the random position that we have. This adds a little bit of, of a random value to the direction. So if I put direction at zero, now when I play, even though the speed's up, the cursor's not moving anywhere because I haven't told it what direction to go in. If I put random direction at 100, what will happen now is each time I trigger a note, it'll randomly choose a direction. Sometimes it'll successively go in the same direction, but since it's random, you know, every now and then it may go the other direction. So this will just add random value to the direction and the speed. Here we have loop. So you've got three different uh, modes of loop here. Just have it off. What that means is when I strike a note, the cursor will go all the way to the end, and then it will just stay there. 
until I release and then the sound goes away. If I put it on on, what this will do is the cursor will go all the way to the end and then loop back and continuously do that until I lift up. And then the last function in loop is alt, which stands for alternating. And so what this does is it will go all the way to the end, then it'll come back and it'll continuously alternate the direction of the loop. The control under that is just uh, REL, that stands for loop until release. So what this does is since it's off, what that means is if I strike a note and then I release it, it'll continue to loop until the sound is completely dissolved. Lift it up and it's still looping. Now if I activate this, what happens is once I release the note, it'll still continue in the direction it's going, but once it's reached the end of the wavetable, it will just hold there. Moving on to legato here, when this is deactivated, what this means is I can play notes in a successive order. Each time I trigger a new note, the cursor is going to move back to the position that is dictated by the position knob here. So you can see this. Here, I'll play. As you can see, when I played that, each time I triggered the note, it went back to the starting position. Now if I hit legato, what this means is the cursor will continuously move even if I'm triggering new, new notes. Then you have a sync function down here. What this does is it syncs the playback of the wavetable to the, the host or the DAW that you're in. Now I'm going to go to the multi. Multi's a cool function. It can add a lot of richness to the sound. Um, it can also make it pretty thick. What you have is number, detune, pan, and spread. You can set the number up to eight. What that means is you can add eight oscillators to the sound. You also notice that it goes into fractions as well. So if I put this at 3.5, what that means is I've added technically four oscillators. Three of them are going to play back at full volume and the fourth one's going to play back at half volume. And when I add more oscillators, you can see more cursors being added to the, the waveform up there. Detune, this allows me just to detune each of them just a little bit. Pan, this isn't a pan talking about left, center, or right. What this is is technically a stereo image. Um, imagine that when it's all the way to the left like this, or at off, zero, um, it's very narrow, and moving it over to the right uh, makes it wider. Spread allows you to adjust the distance between each of the oscillators. So as we can see, the different cursors here, if I move this down, you can't tell them apart because they're just bunched together. By spreading it out, I can make a much more complex sound. You can see them all moving and moving and going in different directions. Now we have a function to turn on and off format. By turning on the format, this will allow you to adjust all the formats of the entire wavetable by a specific value. You can set here with the format knob and when I change that you can visibly see the it being reflected in the uh, display up here. Next you have the format key follow. This will allow you to shift the formats depending on the notes you're playing. So if you have a value of let's say 100% the format frequency will move with the played notes. And lastly, for the wavetable section, we have the waveform modulation. I can turn it on via that switch there. We have a preset menu. You can change the waveform type, retrigger modes, destination. Everything you find in the destination menu will only be in wavetable one. Uh, it's specific only to this wavetable. Now, if you go to wavetable two, it has its own and everything in here is specific to the parameters in Wavetable 2. There's an amount, and you can adjust that, how much the LFO will affect whatever the destination is. You've got a rate, shape, and a phase. Now we have a sub-oscillator. You've got six different uh, waveform types. 
There's a sub level, allows you to mix it in, and a pan. This is just your standard pan, center, left, right. Noise oscillator. There's over 200 different noise types that you can choose from. The S stands for sync. This allows you to sync the playback of the noise uh, sample to be sunk with, the, with your host. You've got a loop. This means that when you play the, the noise sample, it'll continuously loop through the sample rather than just playing one time through. Follow pitch once it's activated. Uh, this will affect the duration of the sample playback. Uh, so let's say you're higher up on the keyboard, the duration will be much shorter than if you were to play it lower on the keyboard, uh, it'll be much longer. Now once it's deactivated, it'll, the duration of the sample will default to whatever your settings are here for the speed and the noise key follow. With that in mind, we can go to the speed. The speed will dictate how quickly uh, it'll play back the noise sample. The noise key follow will uh, modulate the speed as well. Let's say I put this at 100. What this means is that every octave I go up, the speed will double. Noise start, pretty much uh, you can relate this to the position knob over here in the wavetable. This just tells us where in the noise sample the playback will start. So here it'll start from the beginning. There it'll be right at the end. The noise random, this is also the noise random start. Um, what this will do is it's very similar again to the no uh, to the wavetable position, random position. This will select a random start within a specific range. Uh, that range is specified by whatever value you put here and the noise start. Noise level, so pretty simple, it's just the level of this oscillator. And then the noise pan, again, just a standard pan, so you have left, right, and center. So that concludes the synth section walkthrough of Wave Create 2.0.